Advent Acclamation is on page three of the service leaflet. O Emmanuel, the promise and the fulfillment of all promises. God may bring among us the joy of your kingdom. Even so, Lord Jesus, quickly come. Amen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your spirit, your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Holy Scripture. sorrow and affliction, O Jerusalem, and put on forever the beauty of the glory from God, put on the robe of the righteousness that comes from God, put on your head the diadem of the glory of the everlasting. For God will show your splendor everywhere under heaven. For God will give you evermore the name, righteous peace, godly glory. Arise, O Jerusalem. Stand upon the height, look toward the east, and see your children gathered from west and east at the word of the Holy One. 
rejoicing that God has remembered them. For they went out from you on foot, led away by their enemies, but God will bring them back to you, carrying glory as on a royal throne. For God has ordered that every high mountain and the everlasting hills be made low and the valleys filled up, to make level ground so that Israel may walk safely in the glory of God. The woods and every fragrant tree have shaded Israel at God's command. For God will lead Israel with joy, in the light of his glory, with the mercy and righteousness that come from him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Logan. <laughs> Canticle 16 is found in your service leaflet. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to set the people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of the servant David. Who is all the prophets from our soul, that he will save us from our enemies, from the hands of all our babies. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to the members of the Holy This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies. Free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord for the to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. And the end of compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break the hearts. To shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory, Glory to the Father, and to the, the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, the beginning is now and will be Come, 
Holy Spirit and fill the hearts of your faithful people with the power of your word. Amen. Please be seated. We all know that Advent is about preparing for the coming of Christ on a cosmic level, in history, and in our own hearts, all of which may seem very vague and not particularly time-bound. But today's Gospel reading, in narrating the call of John the Baptist, Jesus' kinsman, the one sometimes called the forerunner, this Gospel reading is very specific about the details of when and where and who. The when is during the reign of Tiberius, the Roman emperor, and during the years when Pilate was the governor and when Herod Antipas and Philip and Lysanias ruled in the northern parts around Galilee, and at the time when Annas and Caiaphas were serving as high priests in the temple in Jerusalem. The time scale and the scope of this passage starts out very widely with the Roman emperor, thinking about the whole empire, and then eventually it narrows way down to the specificity of the high priestly Rhoda. In setting up this time frame, Luke is telling us that what happened was at a very particular time in the life of God's people. It was a time when neither Roman nor Jewish leaders were viewed as having true authority, and there was a yearning for God to act, to change the situation. The narrative focuses on a single person, on John. He was the son of Zechariah, a priest, and the son of Elizabeth, who was descended from Aaron, the original priest of Judaism. You may remember Aaron was Moses' brother. By rights, John would be taking his place in the family business and follow in the priestly ministry after his father and take his turn serving in the temple. But the Lord had other plans as we heard in the canticle that we read, that was what Zechariah sang when he heard about uh, John's birth. The Lord had other plans for John. Instead of John being located in the temple, or even in Jerusalem as a prophet of the Lord, he is in the wilderness, in the desert region around the Jordan River, the eastern edge of the promised land, liminal space, far from the seat of either political or religious power. And it was here in the wilderness that the word of God, the prophetic call, came to John. His role and vocation was to announce the coming of the Messiah and to urge people to prepare themselves for a new and fresh act of God. All the details that Luke gives us are important. They all have meaning once you dig into them. And they would have resonated, they certainly would have resonated for those who were aching for God's renewal. The wilderness around the Jordan would have been a reminder of the Sinai wilderness in which the Israelites were formed into God's people after they had been freed from slavery in Egypt. The wilderness was always the place where God met his people, stripped of the trappings and temptations of power and ease. It was a place of vulnerability and uncertainty, where all one could do was to lean on and trust in the provisions of God. John's call in the wilderness was to renewal, to a renewed dependence on the Lord, to a new experience of exodus. 
And despite all the celebration that we think of connected with the Exodus, with the Passover, and you may have in mind, you may remember that wonderful image of Miriam with her tambourine on the eastern side of the Red Sea once the Israelites had gotten across and realized they were safe. Miriam singing and dancing to the Lord. So far, so good. But they had another 40 years ahead of them. The wilderness was always the place where God met God's people. And the preparation that John was now calling the people to was baptism. Baptism had long been the way that the Gentiles prepared for conversion to Judaism. One echo of John's message in calling people to baptism was that those who were Jewish by birth could not assume by their heritage that they were really ready to receive the Messiah, but that they needed to be willing to accept baptism as a symbol of a fresh start with God. John proclaimed a baptism for repentance, for the forgiveness of sins. And I hope we all know that repentance means turning. Turning around, changing course, heading back in the right direction. John's call was for people to repent of their own individual sins, but also of the sin of the nation, the whole society, to clear the way to receive the Messiah, but also for them to be able to follow, to get rid of the stumbling blocks. But we'll hear more about that next week. Always these two middle Sundays in Advent are a pair about John the Baptist. In offering commentary on John and his ministry, Luke goes on to quote a passage from Isaiah 40, which refers to a time when the Jews were being released from their exile in Babylon, and they were returning to Judah centuries after the first exodus, but in itself, its own sort of exodus experience. It was another time of renewal and formation and a fresh start. Prepare the way of the Lord, Isaiah said. Make his paths straight. This quotation reinforces the idea that in many ways the people of John's time had been in spiritual exile, far from God's purposes for them, just as the Israelites had been when they were in Egypt, just as when they were in exile in Babylon. Who, when, where, all of these specifics are important to the word of God that John proclaims and that Luke narrates. Throughout the history of Israel, God has acted in time and place and the specificity of people's lives. John's ministry is calling people to get ready for God to act again in a really important and dramatic way. Jesus launching his public ministry. And in Advent, we are called and invited and urged to prepare for the coming of Christ, for the action of God. This year, in this place, in your life, in your family, in your work, in your heart, what specifically do you need to do to prepare? to make room for Jesus? What habit or attitude or pattern do you need to change? What relationships do you need to mend? What do you need to do to allow God to bring you back from a far place, perhaps even from exile? to be able to see and know afresh the salvation of God, the goodness and mercy and grace of God for you 
and for those you love. There are no depths to which God will not go to meet you, to show his love for you, and to invite you to begin again. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for sending John the Baptist to be your prophet, to prepare your way, to give us knowledge of salvation. And in your tender compassion, we ask you to forgive us our sins, to let the dawn of your love break into our lives, to shine on our darkness, and to guide us in your way of peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. our hearts to God in the words of the Nicene Creed, found on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, he God from not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under the Pontius he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people for Advent. You are invited to add your own prayers at the designated time. In joyful expectation of his coming to our aid, we pray to Jesus. Come to your church as Lord and Judge. We pray for these members of our parish. Lisa Wright, Michael Murray, Lauren and Jack, Melissa and Dave Pagliero, Candy and Glenn Pecoro, Joseph and Gabrielle, Cindy Peterson and Greg Tussar, Henry, Kadane, Bakerte and Elizabeth, Kathy and Alan File, and for these parish ministries, our handbell choir. We give thanks for the blessings of this week. Help us to live in the light of your coming and give us a longing for your kingdom. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Come to your world as King of the nations. We pray for our country and our communities, especially for the Long Hill Township Library and staff and volunteers. Before you rulers will stand in silence. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Come to the suffering as Savior and Comforter. We pray for all on our parish prayer list, especially Patty Harris, Jean Kainak, Betty Conrad, Susan Levon, Jean, 
Betty Page McGee, Roy, Bill Ward, Leanna Wallerding, are there others? Break into our lives where we struggle with sickness and distress, and set us free to serve you forever. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Come to us as a shepherd and guardian of our souls. We remember all who have died and those we name. Give us, with all the faithful departed, a share in your victory over evil and death. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Come from heaven, Lord Jesus, with power and great glory. Lift us up to meet you, that with all your saints and angels, we may live and reign with you in your new creation. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus, do not delay. Give us new courage to your people who trust in your love. By your coming, raise us to share in the joy of your kingdom on earth as in heaven, where you live and reign with the Father and the Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Returning to page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please share a sign of God's peace. Please be seated. Welcome to our service today. And uh, please join us for some uh, some refreshments following the service in the in the parrot hall. Um, we'll be glad to see you over there. The announcements that are here are on page 7 of your service leaflet. Um, please do take a look at them. I want to say a particular thank you today to uh, Matt Dalmado and Waring Webb and uh, Dave Pagliaro for getting our big wreath up on the, uh, uh, the front of the church yesterday. It looks great. And then on December 19th, we'll be greeting the church. So decorating everything for Christmas, so I hope that some of you can help with that to stay after the, the 10 o'clock service. Um, uh, the Christmas Adoptive Family gifts are due back today. Uh, please leave them in the green basket on the table, and uh, Jackie will collect them all and deliver them to uh, the Social Services Office in Elizabeth. And thank you, everybody, for doing that, because we certainly are helping out a number of young people and their families to try to make their Christmas a, a little bit happier and easier all the way around. So thank you for all of that. Uh, this afternoon, the Narnia Book Club, uh, the information's here. Family Promise Homeless Shelter. Uh, the email that is here, I don't think is right. The correct email to reach Absinthe 
about the Family Promise Homeless Shelter is in the Advent Reflection uh, email that went out uh, this morning. So please take a look at that. Email Asana if you can help her because it is our turn, it is All Saints' turn to help with Family Promise next week. Um, and then finally, the Christmas worship schedule is on the bottom of the page there. A mailing also went out on Friday, so you'll all have that mailing there with you, you know, for you to look at. Um, please read it and pay attention because the times of the services are a little different this year. Our later service will be half an hour earlier than usual because we're not going to be having a, a time of music, a concert beforehand. So the 10 o'clock service will start at 10, yeah, the 10 o'clock service will start at 10 p.m. The late service will start at 10 p.m. Um, nothing might be in redundancy. I will start at 10 p.m. Um, and that service will be live streamed, but we do hope that people will come to that service in person. Um, you do have to register for it. And the registration link is on the website. It's going to be in emails. It's um, in the letter that was sent to you. Uh, we do need to have you registered. The early time on Christmas Eve is split into two identical services, one at 3.30 and one at 4.45. Um, those will be much shorter than they usually are. They will be particularly focused on families with children, but they're open to anybody. Um, and in between those two services, we're going to have Christmas caroling outside uh, with a reading of the Christmas story and, um, that's, and, a, and the tree lighting. So all of those things will happen outside. There's no need to register for that, but you can come to the first service, stay for the caroling. You can come for the caroling and stay for the second service, or you can just come for the caroling whatever uh, will work for you and your family. But any of the services indoors on Christmas Eve, you need to register for ahead of time. And if you don't have a computer and you can't sign up that way, call the parish office and leave a message and we will register you. And then Christmas Day is just our normal Christmas Day. Just come and be here and celebrate the day. So that, that's enough in terms of announcements. Um, does anyone else need to bring anything before the parish this morning? Does anybody here have a birthday or an anniversary in the month of December? Birthday, anniversary, baptismal anniversary, whatever you might be celebrating. Some kind of milestone in your life. Please come forward. Let us pray. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase, especially Rondi and Matt, Matthew, Tim and Barbara, Betty and Roger. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. okay. Happy birthday. And happy, happy anniversary. <laughs> happy birthday. Happy birthday and anniversary. Happy day. Happy birthday. You're welcome. Now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
we stand and sing the offertory hymn, the words printed in the service paper. <laughs> from sin and death, and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. 
And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with John the Baptist and Zechariah, Elizabeth, Nicholas, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia! The gifts of God for the people of God come and receive the gifts of life, hope, and freedom. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
eternal God, Heavenly Father. You have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, by whose providence our Savior Christ came among us in great humility, sanctify you with the light of his blessing and set you free from all sin. May he whose second coming in power and great glory be awake, make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. May you who rejoice in the first advent of our Redeemer at his second advent be rewarded with unending life and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. We had hoped, you all know this is the second Sunday in Advent, it's the first Sunday in December, the 5th, tomorrow is December 6th, who knows what day that is? Yes. Christmas. Oh, getting close to Christmas, you are so good at it. Somebody else, what's December 6th? St. Nicholas Day, that's right, and I, I just have been given this letter. This epistle from St. Nicholas, and I think I need to read it all to you. <laughs> to the beloved in Christ at All Saints Church at Millington, in the township of Long Hill, in the Diocese of Newark, greetings. This has been a long and hard year throughout the known world, and in every place the Lord's people gather. I would have so enjoyed a visit with all of you this year, and it did seem that travel would be possible. But now this plague has taken another turn. And there have been all kinds of barriers erected to my being able to come to you. And it seems best to refrain from a celebration of my feast day with you. But more important than my own festivities is our shared faith in Christ. And my heart is gladdened to hear of your persistence in prayer and worship and making melody to the Lord. It is this faith that inspires my own generosity to the poor, my own compassion for the suffering, commitment to the truth of Christian belief, and the delight of children. I bid you to continue your faithfulness in these things. And I look forward with hope to another celebration with you next year God willing, and your good Bishop Hughes consenting. I have, however, been able to secure the services of a messenger to deliver a small gift to you. I hope that it will remind you of the joy and sweetness of generosity. And now I offer my prayers and best wishes on your Advent preparations for the coming feast of the Nativity of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given by my hand in the city of Myra on this day, the 6th of December, in the year of our Lord, 2021, Nicholas, Bishop of Myra. Well, we say thank you to the good bishop, and we have, uh, we have oranges and chocolate coins. Waring and I will... Uh, Distribute them as we sing our final hymn, so please stand, and then we'll leave these at the back table if you want to take any more with you. <laughs> Thank you. 